Hey everybody and welcome back to WWW. This is our second video and it's actually a special edition because it's in support of a fashion line, a pop-up fashion line called Draw the Line. Draw the Line make t-shirts inspired by real women in history and all of the profits go towards a charity called Survivors Together. Their launch is coming up this Saturday and because it's a pop-up fashion line you want to get them now. So I've included a link at the bottom of this video where you can go check out what the charity is about and where you can order the t-shirts if you want to. But until then, I'm going to be talking about two of the women who inspired the designs on the t-shirts. So the first person I want to talk about is named Edith Cavill. And here is the design for the Edith Cavill inspired t-shirt. Edith was born in Norfolk, England, and her father was a vicar. In World War I, she was a nurse. On the battlefield in World War I, many soldiers who were wounded were left for dead by their fellow troops as the German lines advanced and they had to keep fighting. So Edith hid over 200 soldiers in her clinic and nursed them back to health, and eventually got them out of Germany-occupied Belgium and back to their home country. She was arrested and put on trial in Germany for treason. There were several people on trial, and at first, the prosecutors wanted to make an example of them and execute nine of the ones that were arrested. The judges decided on five, but in the end, it was only Edith and one other person who were executed by gunfire on October 12th, 1915. Her contribution during the war was so significant that British officials offered to have her body buried in Westminster Abbey. And now many universities and many hospitals have dedicated either a wing or a building to the name of Edith Cavill and the memory and the spirit that she represents. The strength and inner beauty that Edith Cavill possessed is really summed up in a quote that she said only two hours before she was executed. And she knew she was going to be executed. She was visited by an Englishman, and this is what she said to him. I've realized, standing as I do, in the light of God and eternity, I've realized that patriotism is not enough. I must have no hatred or bitterness towards anyone. I think we can all learn something from Edith Cavill's philosophy of fighting adversity with unending kindness. I think that's a pretty incredible idea to live your life by. How much kindness can you show the world? That was what she was about, and I think everybody can take something from that. Now the next person I want to talk about is named Marsha P. Johnson, and this is the design that was inspired by her. Marsha was an activist, a prostitute, a drag performer. She modeled for Andy Warhol, and she was a shining beacon of light for those in the LGBTQ plus community. She was a transgender woman who lived in New York for most of her adult life, and she lived in a time when same-sex dancing in public was prohibited, when bars were banned from serving gay people drinks when you could be charged with sexual deviancy for cross-dressing in public. While she was working as a prostitute, she was arrested over 100 times and was even shot once. On June 28, in 1969, police invaded a gay bar in Greenwich, New York and dragged out many of the patrons and all of the employees. This sparked a six-day riot outside the bar between the gay community and their allies and the police. This event is what started what some people call the Gay Revolution and even inspired things like the Pride Parade, which we all celebrate today. This is when people in Greenwich and people within Marsha's community began to recognize her as an advocate for LGBT plus rights and for transgender rights, because she was at the forefront of this six day riot when she was only 23 years old. After that, she joined the Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, or STAR, which advocated for transgender youth and even housed, clothed, and fed them. She was diagnosed as HIV positive in 1990, and two years later, they found her body in the Hudson River a couple days after an interview she had given going public with the news. Her death was quickly ruled a suicide, which many of her friends and family questioned, and a couple days later, it was re-ruled as drowning, Recently, though, in 2012, they decided to open the case again, and it remains open to this day. I tend to well up every time I talk about Marsha, um, because she truly was a revolutionary. You know, she faced incredible hardships in her life. She was homeless for most of her adult life, and through it all, 
she continued to advocate for the people in her community and for her rights, and for the rights that she and the people in her community deserved. She died before her time. Uh, she was very young. She would have been 73 today. Uh, so in closing, I want to end with a quote from her. And it's a very short quote, but I think it's incredibly powerful. And that quote is, No pride for some of us without liberation for all of us. So if you were inspired by either of these women or their stories, I would urge you to click the link at the bottom of this video and wait for Saturday, which is the launch of the Draw the Line collection. Once again, all the profits from these t-shirts go towards a charity called Survivors Together. Survivors Together is a group for women survivors of sexual abuse. So incredible t-shirts, incredible women, incredible stories, and an incredible cause. What more could you ask for? See you all next week.